Good evening. Welcome to the Spiritual But Not Religious show. I'm your host, George Lewis. Got to have a great evening this evening. Uh, my guest tonight is a fantastic lady from L.A. who has a center in L.A. She's a channel. She channels an entity or group called Isaiah. And I've, I've talked with her before, and she just does some really amazing right-on things with, uh, with people. You're going to really enjoy her this evening. Her name is Amaya, Amaya Victoria. And Amaya, as I was talking earlier, is from L.A. She has a center in L.A. called the Amaya Center. And you can, you can find, uh, find her on the Internet. You can uh, Google uh, Amaya Victoria or the Amaya Center. And Tom will put the uh, address information up in the uh, chat box. But before we get Amaya on the line, and I tell you a little bit more about what we're going to do this evening, it, it, I want to tell you about the spiritual broadcasting network and what we're doing with that. One of the things that that I became aware of is the millions of people out there who really label themselves as Christian, but not really Christian in the uh, common form that we talk about. Most of them don't go to church. Most of them, many of them don't believe at all in the, the dogma of the standard Christian church. And there are millions of others who just believe in something spiritual, but not necessarily religious. And so what we've done is created a broadcasting company, uh, and we're going to operate much like, if you recall, the uh, CNN, the Christian, or CBN, Christian Broadcasting Network, which really focused just on Christianity. We're going to bring you the many, many diverse voices of the spiritual community. And there are, are a great amount of diversity. It's wonderful. It, it, it seems to me that, that God kind of comes through to us in terms that we can understand. And accepting this diversity is, is an important part about ever ever reaching a place of peace in the world. And so that's our whole goal, is to be able to bring you those voices so that you get an opportunity to hear and see this diversity and and we can kind of come together so we have a, a place in the universe where we have some sort of power and some say in the world. So join us in, in our effort uh, as we move forward. We've got a lot of good shows lined up that are gonna be coming on here in the fall and we expect to grow pretty rapidly so stay with us uh, we're, we're looking to have a really good uh, a really good season this year uh, back to my show tonight the spiritual but not religious show actually the uh, uh, my guest tonight is, is uh, uh, Maya Victoria and we've got Tom Johnson's wife Megan who is going to be uh, the, uh, someone that that um, uh, Amaya is going to work with Amaya channels, and so uh, Amaya does some pretty interesting things. If you read it all on the website, there that bit of a bio that talks about somebody just coming up to you and telling you, you know, like uh, what's going on in your life. Well, that's pretty much what's going to happen here tonight. So I'm going to check Tom. We have Amaya on the line. Good evening, Amaya. Good evening. Uh, I, I, we're going to probably have to get your volume up a little bit. Uh, okay. There. Are, are you close to your mic, Amaya? Yes, I am. Oh. I've got, I've, I'm on a landline that's actually wired. Okay. But. Actually, we're, we're, you were sounding pretty good now. How, okay. So we had, a, we had the gremlins tonight with your, with your video. Uh, you got a new computer, and things kind of went haywire. No, I had this computer last. I had this computer. Oh, is that right? It's not, so it's right. not, not a new one. Well, you never... No, I think it's just... In Maybe the, some little gremlins don't want me on the air. <laughs> well, you know, this gremlin wants you on the air. So, I know it. so well, I'll tell you what. The, the, it, when you're, when you're doing live and you're you're, you're using the internet and the, uh, the, the, the the it's it's really still a kind of technology where just about anything can happen. And so, uh, in, in computers, you just you never know. I, I was at I was at 4:30 this afternoon having all kinds of difficulty with equipment here and got it all resolved and uh, and here we are. So, well, and the, and the type of guest you have also, I mean, I have a tendency, a propensity to screw up electronics. It is. 
Well, you know, Sometimes. you know what, Amaya, there's much to be said about that. I, I totally believe that, Tom, and I. That's been our experience, hasn't it, Tom? Yes. What was the gentleman who we who we had that uh, he warned us beforehand? We were. Brewer. Brewer. Wayne Brewer. Wayne yeah. Brewer. Yeah, Wayne. Wayne writes some, you know, you know, stuff that uh, <laughs> some of these forces don't like. So we we sure we sure had it going on that night. So yeah. t- so tell us, Amaya. You you tell us first of all a bit about you. Give us a little of your bio, your background, how you came to be a channel for Isaiah, and then and then we'll kind of we'll kind of go from there. But I'd like our audience to get to know a bit about you before we. Before we see what you do and how you do it. Well, well, where do I start? You know, I was born. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. We'll just take the Reader's Digest version. <laughs> yeah. I was born January twenty third. You know, um, uh, I was born to do this work. As a young child, I saw spirit uh, continuously. I love the fact that the the book, The Sixth Sense, is out. Uh, the movie. I'm sorry. Right. Because that was me as a child. Oh, really? Years later, yes. Years later, with one of my shamanistic healers, we were talking about this. I would come in for, for a session, and he would just sit there and, like, stare at me when we were talking. And he said two things to me. He said, first of all, he, was, he keeps wondering what I'm being prepared for because I had, I had been going through such a strong cleanse. Still am. Well, when you, say, when you say strong cleanse, what, what, what does that mean? I mean give us a little well, idea. It's a healing Right. And part of the, cl- the healing process, people think, many people think, I should not generalize that much, the many people think that when, when you ask for healing, it's going to be angel dust and light, lights flashing <laughs> and everything becoming, yeah. you know, hunky-dory. And that is not necessarily the case. That's not been my experience. In most cases, there has to be an initiation process in which, which the blockage, the trauma, that that we carry whether it's from this lifetime or other lifetimes or ancestral or someone else's, because we're all in this, in, from the same soup, right. has to be cleared away. And, and the indigenous people call it the splitting open for the poisons to drain out. The Bible calls it the cleansing of the robes. See, that was, that was my... the process of allowing things to be broken up that we consider trauma in our central nervous system, in our cells, in our mental and emotional bodies, our mental and emotional energy and that memory, in our, our physical memory, in our bodies, our bodies remember everything. Right. And so there's a process of, of breaking things up where it has to be released and it needs to be released physically, mentally, and emotionally, and therefore through the cells. That way, th- our spirituality, which has never been in question, can reassert itself. You see, it's not about becoming perfect and becoming this ordained spiritual being, it's, which is already there. It's about learning to live life on earth as a good human being. Absolutely. That's, that's, true, that's, that's true spirituality. That, that, is, that has been my complete experience. And, you know, if we're spiritual beings having a human experience, we don't need to worry about being spiritual. Right. We need to worry about being human. Human. It's the humanness that's in question here. Yeah. The, the human nature is beautiful. We are beautiful beings. It's the human condition, the human suffering that we're struggling with right now. Right. And, and that comes with a great deal of trauma. So... I put up on my Facebook just recently that uh, I was working with someone in the office, and I said, you know, tr- your trauma, underneath the trauma is, is the wisdom, and underneath the wisdom is the understanding, and underneath the understanding is the compassion and empathy, and underneath the compassion and empathy is the love, which we truly all are. We and can't get to the... Lo- trauma. Mm-hmm. It's just It just has to be healed and used properly. It becomes a glorious gift. We, we actually can't even get to the real love until we are able to find our way into empathy and compassion and, right. no, uh, and yeah. humility. You know, we're all, we're all, we all are so set on you know, the love and the joy and the freedom, these big words. Right. And Spirit has reminded me again and again, and has spoke to many groups about this, that we're forgetting the foundation words, like harmony. Balance. Consideration, balance, kindness, you know, understanding, mercy, grace, empathy. Those things, foundation, our ability then to forgive, because forgiveness is an outcome, not an action. Right. It's an outcome of the healing. It's a definite process, isn't it? It's a really definite. It's it's, a, it's actually a death process because the old has to right. die away. Right. 
and then forgiveness occurs. And, and we all have this. We're, we really all are heart, H-E-R-T, beings. Our God is the heart center for seven to nine other gods. <laughs> that that we call God. You can, I call it that because it's the fastest way people know that name. Well, well okay, when, when, when you say that, for our audience, uh, break that down a little bit. When you say our heart is the center for nine... Our God is the heart center uh -huh. for seven to nine other gods, and it's making its movement now up the spiral, meaning it's becoming pure. And so what is happening for each of us on this planet, but we're, we're being pulled, we're being encouraged, we're being moved along, you know? We're, we're being pulled along, we're being yanked, we're being forced, whatever words you want to use to open our hearts. Right. And it makes sense. It just makes absolute sense to us. We're the micro, as above, so below. Right. We're the micro expression of a macro expression that's, that's beginning to, to um, take up speed. It's been going on for generations now. For a very long time. You bet. For a very long time. Uh, forever, actually, from the first breath till now. It's never stopped. So, We're so let's... coming to so, a full circle. So let's, let me come back just a, a little bit to, to yeah, you. Yeah, about myself. So well, well I, have a, I, have, I have a specific question before you, and that yeah. is... Did you get involved with any other kind of work other than what you do now for a period of time, or were you immediately into this kind of... I um, came into this field very frightened, very skeptical, and screaming and kicking. Yeah, I, I hear that often. I sleep in with both feet. I remember years ago, after I had shut down, because I had to shut down at a very young age, like many of us, I came from a very dysfunctional family. Right. And it was all set up so I could become who I am today. You know, I don't regret any of it. I can't say I would ever do it again, <laughs> quite frankly. Well, you're not going to volunteer, right? I, I, I may do it again. You know, my soul is right. very uh, unjudgmental about all this. There's no real judgment. Right. My personality's going, oh, no, and, you know, kind of cringes at the thought. If I had to do it again, I most likely would. I, don't, I can't say I would want to. But I don't have any regret because it has made me personally and professionally who I am. It's honed my gifts. Sure, I, well, absolutely. It's honed it. And, and I was told that by this teacher. He said, if you had been spotted in a village or a tribe, you would have been taken from, from your family by the medicine people and initiated. It's, and it's about, about 20, 25 years. Initiation process is a long time, and it is that breaking down process. So to answer your question, I came in through the tarot cards. Ah, uh, okay. That's how I... So that was your. Up. That was the first. Uh, that was the first way you were making uh, a living was through the tarot cards. No, actually, I made a living as a bookkeeper. That's what I meant. That's yes. what. I meant. So you I were a living as a house cleaner. You, so you, you were know. doing real left brain kinds of things as opposed to the right brain. Oh yes, I I chopped wood and carried water for <laughs> a very long time. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's made me very grounded. Many of my clients. One of my clients has been with me a very long time. Doesn't work with me anymore. On a professional level, but we know each other. We've known each other for close to thirty years. Right. She has said to me again and again, "You're one of the most grounded healers I know." That's you know that's essential. And I've just I've just talked and known so many who th they don't have that grounding. Boy, and Amaya, that that leaves that leaves things kind of adrift. You know. It does for everyone, including them. Oh, absolutely. And, well, that's their path, and for every level, there are healers for every level and every doorway. Right. It just I I had no Earth in my chart, my astrological chart, and. For good reasons, because I was going to learn. I was going to learn about Earth uh, by proxy. I was going to learn by about Earth uh, organically, and I, I have. Right, right. I've learned about Earth, and I, for the longest time, I did not want to be here, and that shifted about 20 years ago. So you didn't want to be on. I can't tell you how it just did. You didn't want to be on Earth at all. I did not want to be on Earth. I was really. I, my, my first love is God. Right. My first love is, is what we call the heavens, and I had to be shown that this place was safe, that I could be here, and it's actually a glorious place. We just need to bring it back around the corner, that we are the marriage of the heavens and the earth. We're the children of that marriage, the marriage of the heavens and the earth. We're the, the um, offspring of that, that marriage. We are we children the of the earth. universe and have a right to be here, huh? Yes, yes. Absolutely. We all have a right to be here no matter how we're walking the path or what we're doing with our lives. We all have a right to be here. So, every one of us. so tell us how did so you're, you were doing the tarot cards and then I, I met a woman who was living at my mother's house um, she had left a card of a, a card reader a business card of a card reader on my mother's table now from 15 till the time I met this woman and I was 
22, 23 when I met this woman, I had been reading everything I could get my hands on about what we call psychic phenomena, which to me is nothing more than the real way of being. So it's the psychic phenomena, et cetera, et cetera, because remember I had up to seven years old, 10 years old, this whole process where I walked in that world all the time. Right. And then I shut it down, but I couldn't shut it totally down. I would have dreams in the dream state uh, for many, many years, even uh, when I was an adult. Uh, the d- night before John Lennon died, I had a dream where the whole world was crying and I didn't know why. Oh, wow. Uh, wow. For years, I had dreams about the Challenger blowing up, you know, and I, I would say every time the Challenger went up, and then finally, after I let it go, years later, the, one of the Challengers blew up. I, and I've had other, not just horrific dreams, but I've had other dreams about things coming to pass. So my into my dream state went my gift. By nature, I thought everyone worked the way I did to the degree I was still open, which was I could feel other people's feelings. I knew about them just by looking at them. Right. And I just thought everyone worked that way for the longest time. Actually, you you, you go... when I met this woman, I saw this card. I spoke to her uh, about the card reader, and we got all... We struck off a 20-some-year relationship at that point. And she is about 15 to 20 years my senior. Uh Uh-huh. So I went to this card reader who said I would be doing this work. And at the time, I couldn't imagine it. And somewhere in there, I picked up a pack of uh, tarot cards, and she gave me a, a, a gift of, of a pack of cards, actually playing deck. And I eventually picked up the tarot cards and um, began to read them. And at first, I used the book. And my favorite deck is the, the original Rider deck. Right. Because I, I, that's what I, I learned off of, and it's easiest for me to read. And for about three months, I was reading it via the book. And then one night, I was reading for someone, and... Um, I just put the book down. I, you could see it was an old gift. You could see it was from somewhere else. Right. And I began to just know. I remembered how to know. And at that point, I began to say things somewhere in there. After that three-month period, I began to say things and not know where it came from, what I was saying, or I would feel my voice change. And I didn't know what I was going to say next, and it would just come out. Unbeknownst to me, at that point, I was beginning to channel, and I just didn't know it. Right. Now, that's not the only thing I do. I'm really a healer and a spiritual teacher through and through. I'm very cathartic in my nature. People either like me or they don't, and I tend to get people stirred up both in my personal life and my professional life. I can just walk into a room and get people going. You polarize people. Of the work I've done on myself. You know, I cannot say enough for the healing process, not only because I'm a healer and I love it, but because um, in, in healing oneself, you become truly original again. What? Truly original again. And so I had to start along with meeting my first teacher through this woman I met at my mother's house, through the card reader, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I met this teacher who became my first primary teacher, Evelyn Isidore. Right. She lived in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania, where I was born and raised. I was born in Philadelphia. And she never taught me the channel. She never taught me to be psychic. She taught me about universal laws and the fact that I belonged on Earth and I was loved. And so every Tuesday for about two years or more, I would sit in a room with anywhere from 10 to 25 women, all older than me. I was the youngest of the women, and she would teach a lesson. And then at some point, we began to do healing work. We actually became a healing circle where people outside the circle would come in with um, people who had died, earth, were earthbound, and someone in the circle would do the work. But the work, this whole circle, it was almost like a circle of Wiccans, you know, the whole, the whole circle would work together. And it was all females, it was all women. Right. And out of that, I began to channel. And the first time I channeled, I was home by myself, because I was afraid of being crazy. And what better way to face that fear but to be home by myself washing dishes. And I had been meditating on a daily basis. And um, someone said to me, I heard in my head, go lay down, we have a message for you. And I've been getting messages in my meditations. I thought nothing of it. I turned the water off at the sink because I would get a great deal of information around water. I still do. I live six blocks from the grandmother ocean. I'm very connected. To so you're on the... Water you're on the which, which is by the way an earth, an air sign. So you're on the west end of L.A. I am on the, um, yes, on west L.A. Very west. good. Okay. I'm down uh, down by the uh, ocean here. Okay, great. And so I went and laid down, and it felt like someone had taken my mouth in a vice. All this energy was there. 
and I began to speak. Now, there was no one else in the house, and as soon as I could get off the sofa, I called this woman who I was friends with. She said, don't do anything more. I'm coming down with a tape recorder. And we taped it, and I took it to my teacher, and like any good teacher, she she pushed my buttons. Huh. And I went, I said to her three times, please tell me I'm not crazy, because I was terrified I was. I was. And she finally said to me after the third time, looking me straight in the face, I can't tell you that until I listen to the tape. And she wait, made him, made me wait a whole week before she got back to me. And you were and you were getting crazier. I was getting crazier and crazier, and I had to leave it alone. I had I knew I needed to respect her and wait. Right. And I waited, and when I came to class, she she said to me before class, "You are not going crazy. You're beginning to channel." And for the for quite a while there, there would be one entity that would come first and say, "This is Michael. I'm clearing the channel." the group will follow and either he would give a very short lesson or he would step out and the group would step in and you could hear if I kept those earlier tapes which I really regret I did not uh, you would be able to hear that they were practicing through me as much as I was getting used to them I'm sure and, and this and was it turned out years later that that was Archangel Michael he never identified right. himself as that he would just say this is Michael did he identify himself as being that at a uh, later uh, yeah he would never identify himself as Archangel so, so he never did, or he did? No, he never did. Okay. That whole time that he he cleared me, he never identified himself. It was only years later when um, I went. I was uh, doing work in Florida. I was. I traveled a great deal for the longest time with my work uh -huh. because I came out of the gate at twenty three, twenty four, twenty five years old. Wow. And, and started working with people. I was. At, I was pushed out at the same time. I had to work on myself. So for a long time there, it was very. It was a very intense uh, process. I bet it was, yeah. What was that? I say I bet. I'm sure it was. It was I, very yeah. intense. And I was in Florida, and this gentleman was a channel, and he channeled Michael. Or he channeled an angel who talked about Michael and told me he was one of my guides and described him. And I, I had been in a very bad car accident where I saw this angel, and I had asked about it to this channel. And the channel said that was Archangel Michael, and I said, but it looked like so-and-so, and he said, Archangel Michael looks a little female. Uh -huh. and years later, I went to an artist who turned out to be my second cousin. After she died, I found out she was my second cousin. I just pulled out the soul portrait she did for me, which is absolutely gorgeous. I did not know she was my second cousin at the time. And I went to her place to have this portrait done. I was giving it to myself as a birthday gift. Walked into her art studio, turned and looked, and there was a floor, to, uh, ceiling to floor, a picture of an archangel and it was the angel I had seen oh wow and I said to her who is that and she said Archangel Michael and I said well the cheekbones need to be more defined and yada huh. yada I don't know what I said and she's standing there with her mouth open looking and she said how do you know that I said because I saw him that's that's phenomenal he came to me when I, I had a near-death experience and stood in front of that light and wouldn't let me go would not let me go and out of the out of being initiated in the Evelyn's group I began to channel very reluctantly I began to channel. My work at first was closed-eyed and um, conscious, and then I evolved to a place where I was open-eyed and unconscious, and now I'm back at a place where I'm open-eyed and semi-conscious for what's going on with the work. Well, t I'll tell you what, now we've got really good background, and I think it'll make you know what you do and uh, Amaya is going to do uh, a little work with uh, Tom's wife, Megan, and now that they, the audience has got the background, I think it is, it'll be far more meaningful what we're doing here. I know my experience with you was very, very powerful. Uh, Tom, you got Megan on the phone. She's out with you. Well, I'll tell you what, yes. Maya, I'm going to. Hi, George. Hi, how are you, Megan? I'm going to let. Well, how are you? I, I'm great, and I'm going to let the two of you talk, and I'm going to sit here and watch for a while. I'm here. How are you? Good, but I don't hear George. Um, you, you're not hearing me now. Oh, now I am. Now okay, okay, good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I would like to say also, along with the channeling, I do uh, other healing work, and I'm actually getting ready to do a mentorship program. You know, after 30 years, I have plenty of, of mm -hmm. information to download Be before the healers. Before the show's over, we'll talk about that in some detail. Okay. We'll have Tom put some information up on... Uh, okay, on great. So um, the first thing that I feel very strongly before we do, Megan is to give a primary message uh, to the audience, or at least for you all to hear. Great. And then I may or may not come on back and take a breath and then talk to Megan for a moment and then go off again, or they may just go ahead and take over and 
uh, the group Isaiah will go ahead and take over and do what they need to do or need to help Megan, how they need to help Megan. Great. Okay? All right, so uh, I just need a moment to go ahead and shift and step back and let the Great Ones come forward so that they can help us. I must say I'm feeling so much love. I'm just, my goodness, I'm overwhelmed almost to tears with the love to bring for it. All right. If there are any microphones or any headsets on, if you'll just take them away for a moment because we must tone at least once. We do not want to hurt anyone's ears at this given moment. Is everyone ready? You go for it. Yes. ones, beauteous ones, those of the beautiful extension of God's heart that has come to the earth, to this plane of the manifestation of the physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, energetic, and prayerful state of joyous longing for home, we bid welcome. And we ask that you bid us welcome because it is not us taking you into the fold it is also you taking us back in to your fold in your hearts you of the glorious tenure the glorious agreement of coming to the earth to not just suffer and struggle but to bring forth the harmony the toning the sound the love of your true selves, of your throat areas, of your hearts, of your ways of being, we bid thank you. We have for you tears of love and of wonderment that masters you would take on such an arduous process, a process of complex, complex instruction, experience, growth, and emotional restitution. Ultimately, it is love that is the only answer because it is love that is the only question. Ultimately, all these experiences, because none of them are just truly mental, are based in the heart opening of love. It seems like a generic statement, but it's the only word we have for this feeling, this sensation that we wish we could pass on to you right now that sits in the channel's heart and throat. It's tenderness, tender love, sweet, sweet knowledge that all is well. Tears of sweet, tender love that is in each of you the innocence of the children, the innocence of the children of God. Innocence is the cradle, the hand, the palm that holds the love. Innocence unbidden by bitterness, unhindered by contraction, holds love cradled tender within its very heart. You are all truly innocent. We do not that mean that in the way of naivete. We do not mean that in the way of stupidity. 
We do not mean that in the way of not having lived life. We mean that in the way of living life